All right, so we're going to introduce our, our first little bit of, well, it's not quite vector calculus yet. Um, we're going to talk about line integrals of functions. And here I mean real valued functions, right? Um, so our function is just going to be a regular, you know, f going from some domain d in r2 or r3, let's say r3, taking values in r, right? So uh, real values, so it takes, you know, so the output is a number. Um, once we get into vector calculus, we're we want to distinguish between functions whose output is a number, functions whose output is a vector, um, and we'll find that one of the terms that's often used, and this is a, a term that's very much borrowed from physics, but you'll find it in the math literature as well, is that in this context you might refer to uh, just regular functions that are, as what are called scalar fields. Okay. Um, scalar fields you tend to think of as densities, um, so weighting functions or like mass densities, charge densities, things like that, right? Um, they, give you, they give you some kind of quantity. Um, and generally when you're integrating a quantity like that over, whether it's over a curve, over a surface, over a region, um, you're, you're trying to, you know, you think about like adding up a density, right, to get the total. Um, this is kind of the context that you should have in mind. Um, so the the picture that you should have here, and by the way, I strongly encourage you to go look at um, the first section in, in the last chapter of the textbook. Um, look at some of the examples. In particular, look at the images. There are some beautiful illustrations of what's going on when we do these integrals. Um, they're really well done. So the idea is, is the following. You, uh, you have some curve, and just for for simplicity, let me draw that curve in the plane, just for now, okay? It doesn't have to be in the plane, but for now, let's just draw it in the plane, okay? Um, so we have a plane curve, so maybe it's something like, uh, like this, right? Uh, maybe it goes all the way around, let's, let's stop there, okay? So there's my curve, all right? Um, if we want to, later on, we'll talk about orientation, we'll talk about beginnings and endings for these curves. Um, we don't have to do that necessarily yet. So, so we have some, you know, so we want to think of that we've started with some interval from, from A to B, and we're applying this function S, right? And it's going to take this interval and turn it into this curve over here. So S of A is there, S of B is there. Um, so we, uh, I mentioned this arc length formula in the last video. Um, one of the things that, uh, if, if you haven't seen it, you should go look at the derivation of the arc length formula. It is, it is quite useful. It's a nice example of, of where the, the mean value theorem comes into the picture. So um, I'll see if you've seen it before. Even if you haven't seen it before, maybe I'll, I'll make you see it again. Um, it is worthwhile. Let me, and let me even give you a little, a little taste of it here, okay? Um, so let's say that is, this is a curve in the plane just because, hey, that's, that's easier for me to draw. Um, so if you think about like finding the length of this curve, or later on we're going to integrate functions over this curve, right? Um, how, do we, how do we make sense of this? How does this make, make any sense? And, and I should add that for the picture that I'm drawing right now, I guess we're doing this over R2, right? Um, the third dimension is in there just because, well, you'll see in a second. So if you think about like integration, right, you, you partition your interval, so you might have, you know, like ti, ti plus one, and so you choose a couple points in your partition, say here and here, right, and so you've got your, your larger curve in the plane, it's here, and those two points, they, maybe they end up here and there, right? So here's S of Ti, here's S of Ti plus 1, let's say, or maybe we're going to do I minus 1, it's not that important. Uh, so the, the way you want to kind of intuitively think of what this function is doing is it's taking this interval, it's grabbing it, stretching it as needed, bending it around until you get the curve that you want. And 
So you, you certainly know the length of this interval, and you know the length of each subinterval, right? It's just the distance from ti to ti plus 1, delta t. Um, but you want to know how much each of those subintervals gets stretched. And, and so the idea is to realize, well, hey, um, I can draw the tangent at that point. I can draw the tangent vector, right? And I can kind of, you know, you can play around. And you can even, if you think in terms of vectors or however you want to think about it, um, you, can, you can work out that the, the distance, the distance from, from here to here, right? The distance, you know, the ith distance, if you like, well, it's approximately the length of that vector. So S prime at Ti time, times your delta T, right? Or maybe delta Ti. Um, so this is, uh, this is something that you can do, right? And so then, of course, the, the total length, well, you just add up all these pieces, right? The approximation becomes precise, and that's how you get the integral. Um, we're going to do the same thing, except what we're going to do now is we're going to define some function over this curve. So you might have some, you know, function like, you know, so maybe it's something like our paraboloid, right? x squared plus y squared. That's not going to be what I draw, but you have some function like this. Um, now that function is defined, of course, at every point in the xy plane, and we can get the corresponding z coordinate, we can draw the graph. But what we're going to do is, instead of drawing the whole thing, we're only going to plot the points that lie over the curve. And so what happens is you kind of, you get this interesting thing going on where you kind of, you know, over each point, you kind of do something like this. And you get this kind of ribbon effect, right? All right. So this kind of picture like this. And so then, and then, you know, a question you might ask is, you know, like, um, What's the surface area? Right? Um, so if, if you were to, and, and, and one way to think about this, right, is what you're going to do is you want to you take this, right, you kind of, you keep track of how you took this interval and stretched it and bent it to turn it into this curve. And then you want to bring things back over to here, right? Because really what you want to end up with is you want to kind of reverse that process of the stretching and bending you use to make the curve. But when you reverse it, you want to bring the function with you. So you bring the function with you, and, and then you end up with, you know, think about like here's your A, here's your B, kind of, you know, we got to tilt our coordinate system. You know, so going that way, here's, here's Y, here's X, or I guess it's T, right? Um, but, you know, this ribbon is going to go to something like that, right? And now you're essentially just doing area under a curve, standard, you know, integral. Um, so how is this going to work? Well, um, just like when we were discussing change of variables, right, um, you think of each, each rectangle over here has a corresponding rectangle over here, right? Um, I didn't draw it so that it lines up, but you can imagine that each vertical line is a partition point, and you could have the same number here as you have there, if I were to draw things carefully. And, well, it certainly looks like this thing is a lot longer, right, than what I have over here. Um, but So if I want each rectangle here to have the same area as the corresponding rectangle over there, whatever stretch factor happened to my original curve going from here to there should be applied, instead of being applied kind of horizontally, should be applied vertically, right? So I take the vertical, I stretch by the same amount, and then the area I get here should match with the area over there. Um, and we know what the stretch factor is. It's this, right? It's that same length of the, of the tangent vector, length of the derivative, that you use to compute arc length. And so the answer to this question is, 
that it's something like this. It's going to be the integral from A to B of F of S of T times the length of S prime of T times dt. Okay, That's going to compute the surface area, right? And again, um, if you're thinking about the picture on this side, then you think of this, this piece here, you think of as your ds. You think of it as a little piece of the curve. If you're looking at the picture over here, um, well, then you think about kind of combining these two together, right? And this is some function, maybe, I don't know, call it like g of t, right? So this is like, um, you know, this is t, this is like y equals g of t, right? Um, and you want, you want the two answers to line up, right? And so it, it's, again, it's this kind of game you play, figuring out what the stretch factor should be, doing this kind of back and forth with the change of variables um, so that things line up, right? Um, the way you typically would write this is you would write something like this. You would probably write something like the integral over C, where C stands for the curve, of F ds. So you'll see something written like that quite frequently. Um, and just to clarify, what do I mean by F of S of t? I mean that if S of t, if our curve, right, if our parameterization is X of t, Y of t, then of course, and my function is f of x, y, f of s of t is just shorthand for f of x of t, y of t, okay? So that's the setup. Uh, let me show you an example. I think we've got time to do one example before we uh, uh, call it a day. So let's, we'll do that example, and then uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, by the way, one more thing to add before we wrap up. Why, am I, why are we learning to do line integrals of these scalar fields, right? Why are we interested in integrating functions? Why do we care about these, you know, these ribbons? Um, well, we don't really so much care about this. What we really care about are integrating vector fields. But it turns out that when you integrate vector fields, what you really are doing is you're computing the tangential component of your vector fields. So you're going to have vectors defined all along the curve and what you're going to do is you're going to take those vectors and you're going to project them onto the tangent vector. You only take the part that's in the direction of the tangent, right? And you know that those projections, those are essentially dot products, right? Scalar products, right? So when you take that tangential component, you get a scalar and that scalar is exactly the sort of thing that you're going to be integrating. So you do need to know how to integrate scalars before you start. Um, Let's pause here, come back, one example of this kind of setup, and, uh, and then next week we'll, uh, we'll introduce vector fields, and we'll talk about integrating vector fields over curves.